radio for the Agile community. www.agile.fm Today I'm here with Jürgen Appello, um, a Dutch guy, a creative networker, writer, speaker, trainer, entrepreneur, illustrator, manager, a blogger at noop.nl, reader, dreamer, free thinker. Um, Jürgen, welcome to the podcast. Hello Jürgen, thanks for having me. Well, this is a uh, recorded, uh, we're doing this uh, over the phone, actually, this podcast, and you can do a couple of things I do want to talk about with you. Uh, well, first of all, there's some, um, it's just a rundown of topics I would love to discuss here on this podcast with you. One is a management workout. I want to talk a bit, a little bit about STOS. I want to talk about how to change the world. I want to talk about who is Happy Melly. I want to uh, talk about if somebody can't draw, if that's an um, option as well. And maybe we talk a little bit about NOOP. Nope. Um, NL. How is that? All right. Well, there's a lot of topics that you want to cover, but I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's start with the workout. Uh, your latest uh, um, addition to your bookshelf, your personal bookshelf, uh, a book you're writing, uh, Management 3.0 Workout. Is that the title of the book? Yes, that's correct. I, I noticed in my classes, uh, Management 3.0 classes and, and at conferences, that people are most interested in, in actionable things that, that managers and leaders can do uh, next week because uh, 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 most of the management books are a bit uh, abstract in the sense that they say, uh, for example, trust the team, uh, but then it is very unclear how to do that on the next Monday morning. Uh, so it is uh, it is lacking in in uh, a concrete actionable uh, sense. So uh, I decided the next book should be very very concrete, and uh, each chapter should be uh, something that you can do next Monday morning or next Tuesday afternoon. That is uh, that's my goal for the for the book. So it's an extension to Management 3.0, which is more like the the concept of uh, of your approach, and this is the the handbook, the uh, the exercise book. Correct, yes. So it's quite common for, for writers to have uh, their, their magnum opus, so to speak, and then have a follow-up uh, with more concrete uh, a, a concrete field guide, so to speak. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm going down the same path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You call your book uh, management, but it's a lot about self-management as, as far as I can tell from, from your side and your writing and everything. So empowerment of the teams, you know, going on line with uh, the agile principles. Um, you were also a manager in the past because you spoke one time at the Agile NYC in, in, in New York. That was in June 2012, if I remember correctly. And um, you were a manager and uh, in an organization before you, um, you know, became public speaker many, many years ago. Uh, what was one of those key events from you turning from manager into somebody writing about management in a very different way um, about management? Is there anything which stands yeah. out? Um, so I have been a uh, manager for about 15 years uh, at various companies. Uh, uh, the last position was as chief information officer uh, at a Dutch company in Rotterdam. Um, and I introduced Scrum in the organization a number of years ago. And um, uh, it, it was uh, reasonably successful. Of course, we had plenty of problems to solve, but uh, at least it was successful in the sense that most people seem to like it. The employees, uh, the top management, uh, customers, and, and turnover dropped to nearly zero for at least two years, uh, so people were happy enough. Um, but I did notice that I had to uh, uh, solve uh, the question, what is my contribution here to make things work? Uh, because the Scrum Guide did not have a description of a CIO. Uh, it doesn't exist in Scrum. And uh, I do not agree with people who say we don't need managers. Uh, let's get rid of all the managers and put them on a list of uh, impediments, <laughs> which is sometimes that I uh, something that I sometimes pick up at Scrum Gatherings. 
Um, I am. Uh, I, I, I agree with Peter Drucker, who said that um, management is is the critical determining factor. And if you look at the biggest problems that agile community is facing with worldwide, according to the Version One State Agile Survey, you see things such as organizational culture, uh, change management, uh, people with the right skills are not available. Uh, support by management, those are the top problems. Well, surprise, surprise, those are all management issues. It's all management stuff uh, that is the biggest uh, issue. So I agree, uh, we have to discuss management, but not get rid of management, instead uh, replace it with better management. Mm -hmm. So that has been my, my uh, at least my attempt at contributing to the agile um, uh, world, and uh, that's why I focus on that, uh, on that topic with my folks. Right. Um, so, so uh, Scrum was uh, was one of the events which actually made you and, and your position as a, as a manager um, think about your new role. And it's yeah, like, correct. Yeah, and everybody yeah. listening to this podcast, um, being in a position like this, um, there is there is definitely um, we could say the word servant leadership or something um, other, um, not necessarily the. Uh, the exact same thing um, as we would do in management prior to the arrival of Scrum or Agile, uh, but there are certain shifts in your position. There might something might change in your job description. Is that right? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, a number of things uh, that I wanted to get rid of, uh, which was sometimes uh, difficult, such as performance appraisals or bonuses for account managers. Uh, those were uh, some of my main concerns and in some cases I won the fight and in some cases I lost it but um, uh, certainly I think I made some progress and um, um, I think uh, this is one of the, the, the yeah the biggest problems that the agile community is facing how to how to change the rest of the organization because we sort of seem to have solved the problem of one software team producing a product mm. uh, that is not that difficult anymore at least if you know if you have uh, the, the, or all the books and, and the experts available but um, uh, everything else in the organization needs to be aligned as well and that's uh, that's uh, quite a challenge mm -hmm. Well, uh, Jürgen, I, I have to say, um, I went to your website, and uh, you're, um, you know, one of the things you're describing yourself is uh, being an illustrator. Your website looks awesome. The the way, thank you. Yes, yeah, so the way how you interact and engage with your visitors on your site is, is, uh, it's just wonderful. It feels light. It feels like there is um, dynamics to it. Absolutely fantastic, and I do. Um, I do have to say I, I clicked on on one YouTube video you made. Um, um, it's called "I Can't Draw," and yes. I, and I was drawn to it <laughs> because I can't draw, and I watched uh -huh. it. And um, and maybe you can just uh, I mean this, the the clip basically says that uh, you you can't draw, and uh, and what's the story behind it? There was so much courage in it. That's what I saw in this video. What was your motivation for creating that? Well, my motivation, first of all, is that I, again and again people ask me who is doing your illustrations, and then I say me. Uh, I do them myself, and then they some of them uh, some people have big eyes, and then they say, "Oh, I could never do that because I can't draw." Mm -hmm. And my answer is nonsense. Anyone can draw. I mean, if you can move a pen across a piece of paper, your paper, you're, you're drawing. Uh, what you mean is you cannot draw well, or at least you think of yourself as not being able to draw well. well that is an entirely different discussion. Um, but in order to get a message across to people, uh, sometimes the only thing you need is a few circles and some arrows and, and your drawing. I mean, you cannot tell me that you can't draw a circle or an arrow, that, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, so, uh, and of course, if you're doing it often, then you develop some skills and, and you get a bit better at drawing stick figures and, and, and whatever. So, uh, I turned that into a video also to experiment with, with um, a new uh, type of presentation that I call Sketch Keynote. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Sketch Notes uh, as a concept are becoming quite popular. Uh, which is uh, people drawing, whether they can draw well or not, <laughs> yeah. but at least people people drawing their notes during conferences or talks or or, or, or whatever. And uh, I I find that fascinating, and that looks that looks great. Some people are, are quite good at that. Um, so they have become popular. And I thought I could I could maybe use this 
kind of presentation, this sketch note, uh, as, uh, as a presentation device when I'm on stage, when I'm doing a keynote. So I call it sketch keynote. Uh, and uh, so I've been doing this uh, since a couple of months, and the, the, the response has been amazing. People love it, uh, and um, I turned one of uh, one of those into a video, which is called uh, "I Can't uh, Draw." That's wonderful. Yeah, and I can only encourage everyone to take a look at that, and um, at least it, it encouraged me to uh, try to draw more. <laughs> Um, okay, good. <laughs> I'm, I'm especially on the stick figure kind of level. That's um, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, um, that that is awesome. So let's talk about one of the things you did do to create those lightness, and there's a video about Happy Melly, and there's a website about Happy Melly, um, and uh, also a very very nice video about uh, you know, the ideas, the concepts behind that, and. Um, you know, maybe you can just uh, mention like what is Happy Mally and uh, what's your goal with Happy Mally and how does this all align with your with your management uh, uh, books and approach? Sure. Uh, so first of all, Happy Mally is a business. Uh, it is, in my opinion, not a movement as some people seem to think. It is a business for making money, um, and I often describe it as a cross between uh, um, a cooperation or a cooperative mm -hmm. and a franchise and an incubator because they are different companies in the world. Uh, right now there are six uh, working together under the same name and that number is expanding. So it's a cooperative. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a franchise because we work with brands such as Manfred 3.0 and Dare uh, that we license out to each other and to other people. And it's also an incubator because we invest in, in experiments, uh, understanding that uh, running experiments is the fastest way to learn. So it's a bit of all three. And uh, I started it together with uh, Martin Fowlers and Varshka Duarte. Um, from uh, uh, Belgium and, and, and Finland slash Germany mm -hmm. um, because uh, I wanted an organization uh, that is uh, for me the most modern thing that we could do in the 21st century uh, because I believe we should uh, uh, stop uh, convincing other people with PowerPoints to change their organizations um, uh, without doing anything about our own organizations. I, I see plenty of examples of that. The long, long, many business consultants uh, have uh, great talks, but they work in organizations themselves that are like the opposite of, of what, they are, uh, what they are trying to preach to others. So uh, I say let's, let's lead by example. Let's practice what we preach first so that we have actual hands-on experience with the ideas that we think are, are good, that we think are worth trying, uh, trying out, and then um, uh, talk about it with other people. Mm. So, for example, uh, one idea that I wrote about for my new book is, is merit money, how people can have a bonus system by giving each other money. And, and right now we are actually implementing this at Happy Melly. Happy Melly board members are using the merit system to uh, uh, reward each other every month. So we have actual concrete experience with an idea like that. And that makes, makes my talks, I think, more believable, ultimately. Yeah. So this is the entrepreneur side in you? Yes. The, yes. the Happy Mally uh, side. Um, just in terms of the, the, the business, I know it's, it's, a, it's a profit business, but um, how, would, how would these things, just as an example, I mean, you mentioned books. Um, there will be um, like any kind of media, any kind of educational media, or maybe even non-educational, or even podcasts, I think, uh, um, could be incorporated into this idea. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Well, actually, uh, the purpose of the business is quite clear, and that is make people happier in their jobs or help them to be happier in their jobs. Of course, this needs an indirect approach because uh, a direct approach would be just throwing a party, uh, but that's, that's not sustainable. Uh, so we need an indirect approach and, and help people perform better in their organizations because that makes them happy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that can mean basically two things. Uh, 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 bringing ideas to people can be uh, through uh, uh, publications like podcasts or books or websites or whatever, uh, broadcasting things, 
or it could be in terms of getting people together, events, mm -hmm. courses, conferences, uh, workshops, whatever. So you will see that basically all the stuff, all the ideas that we have that can help Melly be happier in her job, they will be either events or publications in, in, in a broad sense. And we run experiments, see what works and see what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully uh, half of the experiments will fail. Uh, because uh, according to uh, Donald Ryanson, uh, that would mean that we have an optimal uh, optimal learning rates. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about um, how you. Uh, another topic here on my list: how to change the world, and maybe we can right. connect that with stores, or uh, I guess that's how we pronounce it, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so uh, how to change the world is a book uh, you wrote. It's a, 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 a smaller book than the Management 3.0, but uh, you wrote that a while ago. It was also the talk you gave in um, in New York. How does how do these two things interlink? Stores network and uh, how to change the world. Oh, good question. So um, the first thing I noticed when I finished Management 3.0, my, my first book, is that there were plenty of questions of people uh, uh, in, um, in the form of how do I introduce these ideas in my organization? How, how do I get my managers to believe all this? Because this sounds great, but I, I will never be able to convince them. So then I started researching change management a bit more. I had already read a couple of books on that topic, but I did a bit more, and that turned into a presentation called How to Change the World. Um, then people started asking for a, a written text about that, so I made a PDF, and I, once I had that, I thought, well, I could just as well publish this as an ebook. And the ebook became a paper book. <laughs> so this all emerged quite naturally and unplanned, actually. And for me, it was great because uh, this allowed me to experiment with self publishing, uh, because How to Change the World is a self published uh, 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 book. And it's also much easier for me to bring uh, 20 copies of How to Change the World uh, on a plane than 20 copies of Magic 300, which basically <laughs> bre breaks my back if I, if I do that. <laughs> So, so um, uh, I'll change the world is, is a great as as a gift, and uh, it's a very easy read. It's just ninety pages, and was a perfect experiment for me how to, to learn how to self publish uh, a book. And uh, when I did that, uh, at the same time, I, I, I got involved with uh, 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 Steve Denning and Franz Rosley and uh, Peter Stevens. Uh, I had uh, uh, talked with them, and Steve uh, said to me, "We should we should organize something, of, uh, help managers and leaders everywhere in the world uh, do a better job uh, changing their organizations." And that culminated in in, in the Stoics movement. We got together on a mountain in Switzerland uh, uh, not long ago, and uh, there were about um, you know, 21 people, I believe, um, uh, from different parts of the world. And, uh, and uh, it was intended as a one-off event, but uh, we're quite happy that it, it has had plenty of spin-offs, several other events, and so satellites, and uh, it's, all, it's all amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I'm not involved anymore at this time. Uh, I'm very, very happy and, and proud to have been one of the founders. But I am focusing on, on Happy Money right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I wish the people who took, took over, I wish them all the best. And, and whenever it's possible, of course, I will attend the, the Stoic events uh, when it fits my schedule because they're doing a great job. Right. Well, awesome. Is this a, that's a very nice uh, link to it. And I uh, do have one more topic here on our list. Um, obviously, we can talk about other things as well, not on the list, but um, it's the NOOP or NOP or NOOP or how you would uh, pronounce your website. Yeah, um, it's NOOP. It's NOOP of, uh, of, of no operation. I see. Okay. I I have to say, I thought it would be a blog you might have created in the um, in the 1990s, maybe, uh, as object-oriented programming. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, well, so it was, I, I came up with the name... Uh, long ago, when I, I had absolutely no idea what I what I should be doing, and <laughs> and and basically the name reflects that uh, because no operation is the instruction to a computer to do nothing. Right. Uh, and um, and I thought that was uh, that was an ironic name, which is typical for me. So I I, I, I claimed it, and that and that became my blog. Right. So um, well, you know, this this is when you. Uh, 
you know, in software engineering in the in the nineteen nineties, OOP always triggers something, but it could also be NOAP, right? Yeah, no, is is where it came from. Yeah, what is your what's your intent with that uh, block? What are you trying to achieve uh, with this? Is this more like your personal blog? Is this something you? Yeah, uh, it's uh, it is my personal blog. Um, for a while, I have been unsure what to do with it, uh, but I basically redefined uh, my blog uh, since uh, a number of months ago as um, uh, describing uh, uh, my my own. Um, uh, um, exploration as a creative networker, as I call it. I am, I am fully independent. I, I am uh, indeed an entrepreneur running a business with other people, but at the same time uh, uh, self-employed and uh, trying to organize businesses in a network fashion instead of a hierarchical fashion. Well, this leads to lots of questions. Mm. Uh, how, how do I do this? How do I do that? And my intention with, with my blog is to be more of a reflection tool. Uh, not only promoting my, my, my articles, of course, with, with that, it's obvious that I do that, uh, my, my books and, and stuff, and the events that I, that I attend, but also some reflection on, on how to work with, with uh, suppliers, how to, uh, what to do with, 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 with uh, what kind of customers, etc. So the blog should be my, my personal reflection of my own uh, uh, um, exploration in this unknown, uh, unknown territory. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, uh, the, there will be a brand new layout of my blog uh, launched this week okay. to, uh, to celebrate uh, that I have a new, uh, a new purpose for the, for the blog, so it will be completely different. Uh, the current layout has been, has been there for a couple of years already, so I was a bit tired of it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what I also will be doing is I will uh, start video blogging more. Um, I have run two experiments called uh, 15 Minutes on Air, uh, and one with uh, Angel de Medinia from Spain and one with uh, Jason Little from Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked it. There are 15 minutes, uh, 15 minute interviews uh, with Hangouts on Air. Um, I am now preparing for uh, a, a small upgrade in visuals and, uh, and then uh, schedule more of those 15 minutes uh, interviews. Uh, so um, and that will be part of the of the blog, basically. Awesome, uh, Jürgen. There's uh, one thing on your list uh, of uh, definitions you gave yourself, and that's speaker. We haven't talked about um, mm, yeah. to, to the end of uh, our podcast here together. Um, I hope we can welcome you back sometime to New York for another event. That uh, would be great. We, it's always a great excuse to be uh, to be invited to uh, New York. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jürgen. And uh, thank you for taking time to uh, talk to me here in uh, this podcast for Agile FM. All right. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for listening to Agile FM, the radio for the Agile community. I'm your host, Show Krebs. If you're interested in more programming and additional podcasts, please go to www.agile.fm. Talk to you soon.